I'm going to be posting a whole course on Udemy. It's going to be my first course. I'm really excited. And honestly, I'm so excited for you guys to find it. I haven't really seen a lot of resources for top down pixel art, game development, and UE5. So I can't wait to share how I create 2D games in Unreal Engine for top down. Uh, I specialize mostly in top down games. So please let me know what you think of this tutorial. If you're interested in more, please check out my Udemy when it launches. It should launch sometime this week. I have a full-time job, but I currently set the course to be pretty high priority so I can hopefully start to just create more content for everybody and spend more time instead of on a normal day job work on this course. But yeah, thank you so much. Please check it out. Um, support me on Ko-Fi if you really like what I do, but hell yeah, happy coding. Hello everybody, welcome to the Unreal Engine tutorial and course. We're going to go over top-down mechanics, intro to Unreal Engine, how to set up everything, also how to set up enemies and spawners, and we're going to have a full uh, playable loop. It's going to be fairly simple, so we don't have to worry about like an inventory system or dialogue system. Uh, this is just to get like a playable loop. And then we're also going to go over how to package the game once you're done. So if you already have Epic Games Launcher installed, and if you already have Unreal Engine installed, you can go ahead and skip this video, and I'll go ahead and name them clearly so you can just skip all the way up until you're setting up your project. First place you want to go is the uh, Epic Games Store download, and I'm going to go ahead and link this in Udemy as well so you can find it in the description. But you just want to do the download Epic Games Launcher. Alright, so once you have the launcher installed, we're going to go ahead and add an engine version. All you do is click the Unreal Engine tab over here on the left, and then press Library, which is all of your stuff. When you're here, all you want to do is uh, push the plus button, and then here you can choose through all the versions of Unreal Engine that you want to use. I currently already have 5.3.2, but if you are wondering which version we are using, it is 5.3.2. So from this drop down, if you don't have it installed already, um, just go ahead and select that and that's the engine version that we're going to be using but feel free to choose whatever one you want whatever one you're comfortable with just just let you know though after 5.1 has the new input system and there's some other settings so if you choose an older version it may not be compatible um, but yeah should most most of everything should translate very well though so now once you have 5.3.2 installed or whatever engine version you chose to install you just want to push launch and you'll see here how there's going to be a little Unreal Engine window that pops up. All right, so now that you have the Unreal Engine project here, you but you just want to go to Games, Blank, and then I like to do Project Default as C++. We're not going to be doing C++, but if you ever want to add plugins, um, like let's say the narrative plugin or like any sort of plugin at all from the marketplace. Um, a lot of the code is C++ and so you just want to prepare the engine to have C++ in it. But yeah, this tutorial is 100% blueprint so you don't have to worry there. Uh, so quality preset, um, I like to do scalable because I like to just keep things low quality because you know pixel art we don't have to have like ray tracing and all that stuff. And target platform is desktop and then you just want to choose your path. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose my path here, select my folder. And then I'm just going to name it top down course and you can name it whatever you want of course. Make sure it's on the blank template, clean empty project with no code because we're going to be doing all of that ourselves um, and just push create and let it do its thing. It might take a little bit to launch for the first time if you haven't yet. By the way, you'll see Visual Studio pop up. You want to make sure you have Visual Studio 2022. So if you had any any issues at all opening up Unreal Engine, you want to make sure you have Visual Studio uh, 2022 or some people use Writer, so it's really up to you. This little thing is open, uh, I just minimize it or you can close it. We have now created our own project. So a couple things you want to do, um, it really depends on you on how you want to organize Unreal Engine and just like organize its content. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate everything into their, their own little folder. So you want to, this is the content browser. This is where everything is going to be. So this is where your assets are going to go. This is where the artwork is going to be. Um, your levels, everything. Um, and if you ever don't see it, you can also push um, control spacebar and that will give you up like a temp temporary. Um, and you can also, if if it launched with it not docked, you can do control space and it brings this up and you can do dock and layout just like that. And it'll look, it'll make it look just like this. And over here, this is everything that you have. Um, this is your content folder for your main project. 
you want everything to be in the content folder that you add. So if you're under all, you just want to make sure you double click content and put everything here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is you're going to right click in the content browser and then you're going to go to a new folder. And then I'm just going to call this levels. Cool little trick as well is right click. You could set the color. I like to keep things the same color as their blueprint, basically, or like their icon. Uh, so you can make this whatever color you want, but I'm just going to make it yellow because the, the level icon is the yellow. Uh, let's create our first level. So right click level. And I'm just going to call this L underscore for level. If you like uh, naming conventions, I that's usually what I go off of. So I'm going to be doing that a lot. L underscore is just level. L underscore testing area. Cool. And we're just going to open it up. Awesome. So now you'll have this completely blank area. And so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to edit, go to project setting. We're going to set our editor startup map to testing area. The, this is the level that we just created. So every single time you open up the editor, it'll have this game default map. For now, I'm just going to set it testing. This is when you package it and you launch it. Because uh, we're going to be doing a lot of like packaging and testing, so might as well just keep everything in one place until we have a level that we want to actually spawn in. So really quick, let's go ahead and get the plugins started here. So let's go ahead and do edit, plugins, and then you want to make sure you type in paper 2D, make sure that's enabled. And then if you go to the marketplace, click on the marketplace tab, you type in paper ZD. This is a free plugin. This is what we're going to use to control all of our animations. But you just do install to engine and then you click the engine version that you are currently using. So once you have that done, you click the checkbox for paper ZD and then you just restart. All right, guys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up some basic settings for just 2D games in general. So you want to go to edit project settings and this will pop up. And what we're going to do is type in anti and you'll see anti aliasing mode. I set this to none. There's, there's a couple different ones that you can choose, but none is the simplest, and we could always change this around. I keep this at none here, not a none, because this is mobile, so if you ever wanted a package for mobile, we could just have it that. But now we want to type in motion, motion blur, make sure this is off, and then if you go to, if you type in exposure, auto exposure, and you want to make sure this is off. The reason why is if you were to push play, everything would get really bright and then it would fade out. It's kind of like if you walk from a dark room into the sunlight, it takes time for your eyes to adjust. So it kind of is replicating that. But in 2D games, we don't necessarily need it. You can always play around with it, play around with the settings later on. But this is just what we're going to have for now in the settings. But now what we're going to do is add the assets. So you just want to do right click, new folder, call it assets. And then you could set the color to whatever color you like red so double click assets if you are using my artwork for the course that is uh, totally up to you you can use your own but yeah feel free to use whatever artwork you like but if you want to follow along exactly uh, this is my artwork so um, yeah so I'm just gonna grab this tile set right here and I'm gonna drag and drop it just like that cool so now what we're gonna do is right click so you just want to make sure you hover it right click Sprite Actions, Apply Paper 2D Texture Settings. And what that does is that it makes it pixelated. If I were to not apply the Paper 2D settings, it would have anti-aliasing, which would make it super blurry. So if you like, if you came from like Unity or something, you know that like when you import it, it's super, super blurry. But now it's all pixelated and pixel perfect. So just how you drew it in a sprite, this is how it's going to appear. Sweet. So let's go ahead and right click. Sprite Actions, and Create Tile Set, and Save. And then what you want to do here is right click it one more time. And what we're going to do here is create is click Condition Tile Sheet Texture. And you could just click off of that, just like that. So what that does is that it applies padding on your tile set. Because uh, Unreal has an issue where if you were to create a tile set, there is, there's little lines that appear. So this is just preventing that. Um, so you just want to go to the tile set one more time, right click, and then create tile map. And I'm just going to call it TM for tile map, main testing area, you can call it whatever you like. And I'm just going to drag it out like that. And over here, you'll see transform location. You just want to click this arrow here that resets it to zero. 
And since this is a top-down game, you want everything to be facing up. So go ahead on the X rotation, which is the red rotation line, red, uh, type in 270. What that will do is make it flat. Also, uh, pixel art is very small, especially like these 16 by 16 tiles. So I'm going to scale everything up. And if you click this lock button, it does it all four. I'm going to scale everything up by four. That's a really good number I've come across that just like makes it super easy to game dev. Um, you just want to make sure everything has to scale. So now you see here an empty tile map and the content browser. Let's double click it. Let's dock it up here. So if you hold it and go up there, docks it. And now you can see there's little tiles. Really quick, let's go over to the tile set and open that up. And then the tile size should be 16 by 16. Tile per spacing. All right, so Unreal's, the, the padded system is missing up the tile set a little bit, but that is okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is add box. And what that did was add a collision square over the top. So now we click the next one, add box, next one, add box. And we're just going to do this really quickly to every single box here. And since we padded it, the tile per spacing is two, but I do see an issue here where um, you cannot click the bottom one. And I'm actually going to show you a couple different options that you can choose for level design. So we can't get the bottom three because of the padding, but I'll show you a solution later to fix that. So we could just do everything else. Um, so you can just see that there's a collision all the way through these, just like that. Uh, you just want to double check, and then you could do the same over on this side, but I'm just going to do the grass for now. So let's go ahead, go back to the tile map. And I'm just going to, what you could do here is, this is the paintbrush, eraser, or fill. So if I were to take this and push fill, go over on your setup, do tile width, 16, 16, and then your map width is how big it is. So let's just go ahead and make it like 30 by 30. So it's fairly large. So let's just go ahead, fill, just like that. You could see all of that grass. So if you go paint, you can click a different tile, kind of make it however you like. You can draw. If you push F, that is also the fill tool as well. Another cool thing you could do is actually drag everything that you want to draw. You can just do it just like that. You can you can drag a large amount of tiles and just place it. And, and now we can make like a lengthy area, like a little strip of dirt. But yeah, so feel free to draw however you want this to look and see you in the next video. All right, so once you have the tile map, we can go ahead and close these for now and you'll see it here that there's your tile map. You did it. So now what we're going to do is go back to content and we're going to right click new folder and I'm just going to call this blueprints. You can set the color, right click new color, blue because blueprints. But what I like to do is create a folder and I like to call it core. So it's like the core of the game, everything that's running it. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Make it black, open that up, and you just want to right click, go to blueprint class. And what we're going to do is do a game mode base. And so I'm just going to do GM for game mode and then call it um, action. Cool. And so this is the game mode. This is every. This is what is going to be controlling our whole entire game. So if you open it up and you see here, uh, this is basically if you go on class defaults, you could see everything. Uh, player controller, which we haven't made that yet. Default pawn. Um, just go ahead and keep it dock. And the next thing we're gonna do is right click, blueprint class, and we are now gonna make a player controller. So you just want to do PC player. PC is for player controller, so PC player. This is the main thing. So you want to go to your game mode now, and you want to do player controller class. And now you can see your PC controller here. So you just save, compile, and if you go to edit, project settings, maps and modes, game, default game mode, you want to change that to GM action game. That's the, that's the one we just created. And now you can see our PC player has populated. So go ahead and close.